Today I'm in the office of my good friend Jose Blanco here in the Dominican Republic. And first of all, Jose, let me say thank Doc, you very much for hola. having me once again and, um, and for spending this time to talk about the uh, subject of quality control in cigars. Thank you very much. Well, Jose, uh, as an industry, how important is quality control? Well, I'll tell you. It's, I, I would say it's like any, any industry, the food industry, the wine industry, the liquor industry, it's one of the most important things because if you do not have quality control, if you cannot assure your customers that it has a good drawer, that it has a good cop, that it doesn't have a tight drawer, that it doesn't have a loose drawer, I mean, you can have the greatest tobacco in the world, but if when you're making that cigar and you're aging it and you're packaging, you know, you don't have control out of it, it's, it's just a mess. And if you've ever tasted La Aurora cigars, if, if you've smoked a lot of them as I have, you'll notice that you will rarely get one that doesn't smoke just absolutely perfectly. And many people take this for granted, which you shouldn't, because it is a it's a very complex process to make sure that when you get the final smoke, the thing smokes perfectly. And as Jose said, I've tasted many cigars with wonderful tobacco, but they're plugged or they're too loose and, and they're burning hot, so they burn. It, it, it's it's not an easy process. Well, with that, let's go into the uh, factory and look at uh, the different steps of quality control. That's right. After the tobacco seeds have been planted, grown, picked, cured, fermented, and aged, the tobacco must be prepared for use in making a fine cigar. After two or three years of aging, the tobacco is reawakened and slowly revived from its slumbers. There are three parts to every cigar, the filler, the binder, and the wrapper. After being taken from the aging bales, all the tobacco leaves must be processed. The filler tobacco is what goes inside the cigars. Filler leaves must be counted, sorted, and then mixed into a blend for a particular cigar. This process is done entirely by hand. Then it's off to the mixing station where the recipe for each cigar blend is formulated and carefully weighed. Enough tobacco for making 50 to 100 cigars will be wrapped in individual bundles and then taken to the distribution room to be circulated to the production teams. Meanwhile, the wrapper leaves are handled much differently. Wrapper tobacco is the crowning achievement of every cigar. The wrapper is the part of the cigar that will be examined by every potential cigar smoker and must be close to perfect in every respect. The wrapper leaf is very fragile and must be handled with great care to prevent damage. At La Aurora, they use a machine to pre-moisten the wrapper leaves. Small bunches of 20 to 30 leaves called gavillas or manos are placed on the conveyor belt inside the machine. Different kinds of machines are employed at different factories, but the goal is the same, to prevent the leaves from damage by adding moisture to the leaves. Once the tobacco is placed into the machine, the tobacco can then be humidified. This step can drastically reduce the amount of damaged leaves due to handling and processing. After the wrapper leaves have been humidified, the central vein must be stripped away from the leaf. Many manufacturers use a deveining machine to easily and quickly remove this central stem. However, prior to the invention of this stripping machine, the central stems were removed by hand. This traditional method is still used in some factories to this day. The destemming process separates each leaf into two halves. These halves are then sorted both by size and by color. This step is done by hand by skilled artisans who can make the fine distinctions between the leaves. Finally, the leaves are packed away in containers so they can be made available to the boncheros and torcedores or rollers. The boncheros or bunchers 
We'll follow a recipe by taking a prescribed number of leaves from different tobacco types and rolling them into a binder leaf. To improve quality, many factories employ a Lieberman machine, which will help the Bonchero to roll a more consistent bunch. After bunching, the cigars are placed into a mold. Factories in the Dominican Republic almost universally use plastic molds. These improve quality because, unlike wooden molds, they do not swell, shrink, or break, and they create a uniform bunch. The molds are then placed into a press which compresses the bunch so it will maintain its shape. At prescribed time intervals, a worker will open the mold and give each cigar a quarter turn. This action prevents the hard edges of the mold from creating a seam along the side of the cigar. Finally, the molds are given to the torcedores, who will put the finishing touches on the cigar by applying the wrapper leaf and covering the head with a cap of tobacco. This is a crucial step in the process because the properly applied wrapper will visually demonstrate the quality, or lack thereof, of the finished cigar. But we're still not finished because at this point, a quality control supervisor will check each of the cigars and will pull out those cigars he or she deems substandard. Then the supervisor will pack the cigars into wheels of 50 cigars and note the buncher, the roller, the date, and other information prior to taking the wheel to the quality control room for weighing and for further inspection. In the quality control room, yet another expert will disassemble the wheel and check each and every cigar more carefully. All suspect cigars will be set aside as rejects or will be subjected to further testing. Any wheels of cigars that have not made the cut as to overall weight, circumference, or feel will be taken to the Quality Assurance Laboratory. Here, quality control technicians will draw test and then weigh each cigar. Draw testing measures the resistance to flow through the barrel of the cigar and must be found to be within certain tolerances. The weight for each cigar must also pass inspection. Failure of any of the tests will result in the removal of those cigars from the production cycle. All measurements are recorded so that poorly constructed cigars can be tracked back to those teams of boncheros and torcedores who constructed the cigars. In this way, the production manager and supervisors can work with the rollers and bunchers to improve their techniques and avoid future construction issues. It's only after undergoing all of these quality control processes that a cigar will qualify to take its turn resting in the aging rooms. For 60 to 90 days or even longer, these cigars wait their turn to proudly wear the company band and take their place in the lineup of premium handmade cigars. Mm -hmm.